What's going on guys, it's Dari here, and today we're going to talk about loops and iterations in JavaScript. Now before I continue on, please make sure that you are subscribed to this channel by clicking on the subscribe button down below, so you don't miss out on any content. Loops are used to execute a block of code repeatedly until a condition is met. There are a couple loops that you could use inside JavaScript. We have the while loop, the do while loop, the for loop, the for in, and the for of loop. I want to go over them one by one, so let's start off with the while loop. What I want to do first is to create a variable, so let val is equal to one. And on the line below, let's add a comment where we say that we want to focus on the while loop. Now, in order to create a while loop, we need to write down the keyword while, space, set of parentheses, space, and the opening and closing curly brace. Inside the parentheses, we need to write down a condition. So if the loop is true, we will start over again. And if it's false, the loop will end. And let me actually add that as a comment. True is continue. False is equal to stop. A thing that you do need to remember is that if the condition is always true, the loop will never end. So what we could do is to say that we want to, so what we could do is to go inside the parentheses and say that we want to loop until val is less than 10. So what we're doing right here is doing a check to see if val is less than 10. Right now it is true because val is equal to one. Inside the curly braces, we need to write down something that we want to execute if this condition is true. What we want to do is to simply create a console.log. And what we want to console log is basically the number and we want to concatenate the val, so the value. Now, before you save it, take a moment to see what's wrong with our loop right here. If we save it right now, we will be getting something which is called an infinite loop, because the loop will be executed every single time until val is, well, higher than 10. And the problem right here is that the condition will never be met because val is always equal to one. That's what we said it right here. So I hope that you get it, because the problem that we have right now is that we're not increasing val every single time the loop is executed. So what we need to do is to add an increment operator down below. So right below our console log, let's say val plus plus. So every time the loop is executed, we want to increase val with one. So what we could do right now is to save it. And you can see that the number starts with one and ends with nine. Now let's go over it one more time because this might be difficult when you start off. We said that we want to create a while loop with the keyword while. Then inside the condition, we want to do something until val is less than 10. And what we would like to do is inside the curly braces is to console log a piece of text and we want to increase val every single time with one. Now in the output, you can see that we start with one and we finish with nine because we're saying that it's less than 10 and the number lower than 10 is nine. But if we set it equal to less than or equal to 10, save it, you can see that the last number is 10. And before I continue on with the next loop, it's not necessary to increase it with one. We could also say that we want to set it equal, well, plus equal to two. Let's save it. And you can see that we're making steps of two instead of one every single time. Let's set it back to plus plus again. And what I want to do right now is to focus on the do while loop. And the idea behind it is pretty much the same as the while loop. With the while loop, we're basically checking the condition and then we want to execute something. And with the do while loop, we're going to execute the block of code. So let's say the console lock and the increase. And what we want to do then is to check the condition of the while statement. So what we need to do right here is to write down the keyword do space opening and closing curly braces. And what we want to write down right here is what we want to print out. So let's say console.log. And once again, the number concatenate from val. Increase it right here. So let's say val plus plus. After our closing curly braces, we need to write down well, set of parentheses, and we need to end it off with a semicolon. 
And be aware that we don't need to add curly braces because what we add inside our curly braces right here has been entered inside the do. So the condition, let's do the same thing as the while. Let's set val less than 10. Before I save it, let's comment out our while loop because we're using val right there. That's not what we want. So let's comment it out for a second. All right, let's save it. And well, let me make my text look better. And you can see that the output is exactly the same. But the biggest difference is that the while loop, you will execute whatever is in the do at least once. So if we set val less than one, we will be printing out the console log one time because it will be executed first before the while loop or the condition has been checked. Now the next loop that we have is a little bit different and it's called the for loop. To create a for loop, we need to write down the keyword for, space, parentheses, and we need to add 30 braces. Inside the condition, we need to add three expressions. And let me add a comment for this, because the first one is the initialization, then we have the condition, and the last one is the expression. And let's start off with the initialization. And what that basically is, is the counter variable. And a good thing to remember is that if we create a variable within the loop, we cannot use it outside of the loop. So inside the parentheses, let's set let i equal to zero. So that's our counter. We want to start at zero. And after every expression, we need to close it off with a semicolon. Now for the condition, we basically need to define where the counter needs to stop. So let's say that we want to check until i is less than 10. So our starting point is zero and we want to stop until it's less than 10. Let's add a semicolon again. And the last one is the expression where we need to write down how many times we want to increase or decrease our variable before the next evaluation of the condition starts. And just to keep it simple, let's just increase it with one. So let's create a console.log where we will say that number, once again, is i. The difference right here is that we already increased variable i inside our parentheses of the for loop. So unlike the while and do while loop, we do not need to say i++ right below our console.log. Now let's save it and check the output. And you can see that the starting point, well, let's actually comment out our do while loop again, otherwise it won't work. Let's save it. And all right, you can see that the starting point is zero and the last number is nine. The next loop that we have is called the for in loop. And this one is pretty similar to the regular for loop that we did right here. But instead of looping through numbers, we could loop through the properties of an object. And what I want to do is to create an object. So let's set let person equal to 30 braces. And let's end it off with a semicolon. Let's go back inside our 30 braces. Let's hit enter. And what we want to do is to add a couple values right here. So let's set name, colon, equal to John, comma. The second one is the age, which is equal to 24. We have a job, which is a software developer and the last one is the city so let's say Amsterdam now outside of our object we could create a new for loop where we could go inside the parentheses and create a new variable so let's say let variable x which will contain all the indexes of our list so 0 1 2 3 are the x's so we need to add a keyword in the object that we have called person. Inside the loop, let's create a console.log. Let's go inside our parentheses and let's add a string. And let's say that we want to print out x, concatenate from a string is, and the value is person. And if you do understand arrays a little bit, you know that we could access a value by adding brackets and inside the brackets, we could add an index. We don't want to add a 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. We could basically add x. 
because that's the same as the x that we have right here. So name will be printed out instead of x, but the value will be person brackets x. Let's save it. And you can see that the name is John, the age is 24, the job is software developer, and the city is Amsterdam. The last loop that I want to show you is called the for of loop. Scroll down. Now, the for of loop works in the same exact way, but the only difference is that it is used to loop through an array. So once again, let's create a let cars, and let's set it equal to a new array. Inside the parentheses, let's add the first one, a BMW, second one, a Volvo, and the last one is an Audi. Now, outside of our array, let's create a loop. And as a condition, we want to say let i in cars. Now let's add a console.log of i, save it, and you can see that the indexes have been printed out. So zero is BMW, one is Volvo, and two is Audi. And if we print out cars brackets i, so we're looping through the array, save it, you can see that the values are the strings right now instead of the integers. This was it for this video about loops in JavaScript. In the next video, I want to dive into labeled statements in JavaScript. If you do enjoy my content and you want to see more, leave this video a thumbs up. And if you're new to this channel, please hit that subscribe button.